thinking of upgrading your Royal Enfield 350 to an RS Tech belt drive or already have one installed? In this video I'll show you a simple foolproof way to align your belt and set perfect tension without the risk of over tightening. I'll also show you a clever technique that actually works and we'll even test it using the Gates Belt Frequency app. Let's get into it. Hello and welcome to Ride With T. In the last video we took off Mrs T's sprockets and fitted the RS Tech belt drive kit. We followed the instructions and I made a video about it. And for doing that I have been presented a clock from RS Tech which is very nice of them. I'm going to put this right up on my wall now. A bit of advertising for RS Tech I suppose. Doesn't that look good? But it's also my original sprocket that I had as a pre-production sprocket on my Super Meteor 650. And things have grown rapidly since then. So this was one of the first produced sprockets from RS Tech, and now it's on my wall as a reminder of the progress that we've made. This is the Type 1, now we've gone to the Type 2 with the double flange, right? So in today's video, I am going to walk you through the alignment and tensioning process. I'm going to make this as quick as possible and as easy as possible. And I've made it as a separate video because it's something you can look back to easily in the future. Instead of watching that whole long fitting process, you can just click this video and recheck how to do your tension. So without further ado, I'm going to use my model, my belt tensioning model here. As you can see, I've made this very expensive model to demonstrate belt drive alignment. Even though the sizes are wrong, this one is going to be representing my front pulley on the motorbike and the white one is representing my rear pulley on the rear wheel. The front pulley is fixed. There's no alignment that can be altered there's no adjustment on the front pulley. Everything is done on the rear, and I'm gonna try and demonstrate that now. In an ideal environment, everything's straightened, straightened, everything's straight with a straight line, the belt. If I turn the rear pulley, everything stays in alignment. This one's fixed, this one's not. This was on your rear axle. If I tighten the right-hand side of my right-hand wheel adjuster, that has the effect of doing this to the rear pulley. See what happens to the belt. It moves to the left. Let's center it up again. Comes back to the middle. If I do the exact opposite, I loosen on the right hand side and tighten on the left hand side. That has that effect on the rear pulley and the wheel and the belt moves to the right. So it has an opposite effect of what you think it does. If you tighten on the right, it will move to the left. If you tighten on the left, it'll move to the right. That's the easiest way I can explain to you and demonstrate to you. I hope that makes sense. It all depends on your belt or your chain adjusters on the back wheel, how it runs, okay? Make sure the rear axle nut is loosened just enough to allow the belt tensioners to move the axle, but still snug enough to keep it from shifting on its own. At this stage, it's better to be slightly under tensioned than too tight. If you run into any issues or have any questions, drop them in the comments below and I'm happy to help out. I've just pushed the belt into the middle. I've pushed it from the bottom and I've pushed the belt into the middle of the two flanges and it's kind of staying there. So that's telling me I've got my alignment correct. If I go back the other way, it's staying there. So I'm quite happy with that. That's telling me I've got my alignment correct. And I really don't mind it being close to this flange. One millimeter away from this flange is ideal. Even if it rubs up against this flange, it's okay, but not excessively. And this is not gonna be excessive like this, not at all. There we go, it's gone there on its own now actually. And that's gonna be okay for me. At last it stopped raining, we can get the bike outside and uh, we're going to tension the belt now. 
to tension the belt, we're going to measure it. We're going to measure the tension when it's at its most taut. And the way to achieve that is when the swing arm lifts the wheel higher than what the suspension allows normally. And uh, that means the belt is at its most stretched because this is like a, a curve at the back, the curve of the movement of the rear swing arm. So we're going to use a piece of string. I'm just going to show you quickly. I'm just going to pop that in between the belt and the front pulley twist it around until it gets to the middle. I want to measure from the middle of the front pulley to the middle of the swing arm to the middle of the rear axle. So I'm going to have to do a bit of guesstimation. I'm centre of the front pulley, centre of the front swing arm. I'm going to try and make this piece of string as straight as possible. I need to get the rear axle up this high. The only way I can achieve this is by removing the rear suspension and I do suggest removing it because again on the Super Meteor 650 we just removed one bolt pushed them out of the way it's not really possible on the Hunter so I'm going to actually remove them 100% there's a 17 millimeter nut on the back and it's a 17 millimeter on the front and the bolt comes out suspension comes off I think that's the easiest way to do this we're going to lift up the wheel you can see the movement now that we have in the rear swing arm and the belt is most taut when it's like at its halfway point which is where we want it so we're going to get some blocks of wood and bits and pieces and try and make that in a straight line I'm actually pulling the string out at 45 degrees away from the bike and that's it and then it clears the frame center center I'm just a little bit too high on this one the wheel just need to go down about a centimeter center of front pulley center of front swing arm center of rear axle I think that's a straight line now that's a straight line this is when we measure the belt tension here now and we're going to measure it to 10 millimeters of deflection. We've got a belt tension tool. We're going to set it to 10 pounds with the rubber. 10 pounds right there. And then we're going to push up in the middle of the belt. If you're doing adjustments, sometimes just a quarter of a turn, just a quarter of a turn on the ratchet is enough. Sometimes just an eighth of a turn. That's an eighth of a turn. That's all I'm going to do for now. Too lack of tension is better than too tight because you can always come backwards. It's very difficult to go forwards with the rear wheel. If you do that, you have to release the tensioners and just give it a whack with a rubber hammer. Being careful not to knock your bike off the center stand. Once the rubber hits the bottom that's enough pressure going on the tension tool and we've got to have 10 millimeters of deflection from the belt as we push up I'm at 19 and a half centimeters I push up I'm at 18 and a half centimeters that's exactly how I want it 10 millimeters of movement on the belt right I've definitely got the right tension on that belt I'm getting 10 millimeters of deflection in the middle it's possibly going to be 12 millimeters of deflection once the suspension's fitted. It depends, it's a personal reading, on what aftermarket suspension shocks you've fitted. If you have changed your units, then your reading's gonna be different. I've got 10 millimeters of deflection. I'm gonna put my suspension units back in and measure it again and see what my deflection's gonna be. Just popping the suspension back in. Just remembering that it's gonna be 45 Newton meters of torque when we do it back up, I believe. This can be a fiddly process and might take some time to get right, but proper alignment and tension are crucial for longevity of your belt. Once you're satisfied, torque the rear axle to 70 newton meters, run the bike on the center stand and double check everything. Don't forget to tighten the belt tensioners too. That prevents the hex keys from falling out, which is a common user error. I'll check the tension again after a short ride and then just give it a quick check and a visual inspection every 4,000 kilometers. Now that I've dialed in my personal sag reading of 12 millimeters, it's easy to monitor. I also got a frequency reading of 64 hertz using the Gates app right within spec. 
From here on, I can just use my phone for quick accurate checks. If the frequency drops, I know it's time to retension, but always remember to adjust both sides evenly to maintain alignment. I hope you found this video useful. I know it won't be a high traffic topic, but if it helps you out, consider buying me a coffee using the link in the description or become a channel member for exclusive perks and content. Coming next, my review of the belt drive. Goodbye, noisy chain. Until next time, ride safe.